standby, 30 seconds. This is shuttle launch control. The clock has started, and we're at T-minus 2 hours, 4 minutes, 40 seconds, and counting. Astronauts John Young and Bob Crippen are being placed in their suits. The white room crew is in the process of uh, wiping down the, the hatchway, which will be closed up to ensure that they get the absolutely best uh, seal that they can there. Uh, later on, that... Uh, cabin will be pressurized, the seals will be checked to, and checked uh, for integrity to ensure that uh, they are holding properly for the flight. One of the first things that happens here as we uh, once more begin the count is that the main propulsion system helium tanks will be brought up to their flight pressure of 4,400 pounds per square inch. Everything going smoothly, the leather, weather looking good, uh, all aspects of the shuttle looking good as we prepare for a liftoff at 7 a.m. this morning. We're the countdown at T minus two hours, three minutes, 40 seconds, and counting. This is shuttle launch control. Shuttle launch control at T minus one hour, 58 minutes, and counting. A little bit of chatter occurring as the crew hooks up their comm uh, equipment to the orbiter and begins to talk with the, the people that they need to be with. Driver's coming on. The, one of the first things that was said uh, was by the orbiter test conductor for Rockwell, Chuck Hannon, who said that we hope we give you a better show tonight. And uh, Bob Griffin came back. And, uh, OTC uh, drivers and uh, home engine go. Go. Uh, They also were told that uh, they hope they didn't mind stale sandwiches, that they hadn't had a chance to change out the box lunches which are on board. Uh, astronaut Crippen said, we've brought along a new turkey sandwich. Everything going smoothly uh, as we go through the steps necessary to get us to a launch at 7 a.m. this morning. Glad we are still in work. Crewman, either John Young and Bob Cripp, hold their breath and ensure that there are no leaks around the face barrier. Everything going smoothly up there in the cabin as elsewhere during the countdown. We are at T minus one hour, 56 minutes, 30 seconds, and counting. Go ahead. This is shuttle launch control. Right. Three, two, one. How you read, Chuck? Should you read your arm clear? And DLT reaches loud and clear. One, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. Uh, DLT reaches loud and clear. OTC with a short count. One, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. Reach your loud and clear. Initially, when we plugged in the 
And close our visors here. We weren't pulling any uh, any air into the suits, and we're checking configuration now. OTC TLT. Yes, sir. Uh, can your ECLS man uh, check valve configuration uh, on his readout to see if uh, he can identify anything as to why we might, might not be getting suit oxygen? Okay. Uh, Roger that. The only thing we did different from the other day in sequence 16, we shut TOS valve number 4. Uh, I believe it was a step in sequence 16 and verified it open again, but it might bear rechecking. Okay. okay. Yeah, I copy it. It is open. Okay. Uh, that's fine. We're not getting uh, O2 flow. Okay. Did you check uh, RLS valve? RLS valve was checked. It's open, right? It's open. Okay. Okay, do we have that out there, man? 
we don't at this time. It's back at the uh, forward supervisor's area. Okay, let's work close that crew. Go ahead and get it up there. Go ahead. Okay, uh, can you give me the number of that hose? I think we uh, may have that with us. Go ahead, give us the number of that. Well, okay, it was the, uh, it was back here on that event duty or something. We have that with us. Okay. Can you hand it in for you, please? Uh, stand by one, we'll, uh, we'll hand it in. Matt, tell them where you want to hook it. Okay, if they can um, hook it up into uh, a anesthesia uh, So I believe you could use any one of the big tech uh, POS uh, connections that are uh, easy for you to get to uh, 6 or 8, POS 6 or 7 or 8. Okay, I have a problem with Swift, so I do a box, I'll take that down. This is shuttle launch control at T minus one hour, 39 minutes, 30 seconds, and counting. At the present time, the ASP or astronaut support pilot uh, is in the process of trying to uh, check the connections of the pilot and the commander's breathing air. Uh, which has not been getting through to their helmets at the present time, since it's a common problem rather than uh, either one or the other having the problem. They are checking those aspects of the system, which are common to both of them, uh, and we expect to have a resolution in the near future. At the same time, the solid rocket rate gyros have been turned on. These rate gyros are used by the orbiter navigation system to determine the rate of motion of the solid rocket boosters during their two minutes of flight. 
Uh, we have also had a uh, signal sent, which is the uh, liftoff signal, first motion signal actually, uh, and it has been received properly at the range safety office and at the other areas where it's supposed to be received. Uh, we are going along uh, very well in the countdown with the uh, the one item of the breathing air for the uh, astronauts being worked at this particular time uh, and hope to have a resolution of that problem very, very shortly. That would be followed uh, by the closeout of the crew module for flight, the removal of the items which are in there which are no longer needed, and then the closing of the door. At the present time, the countdown as a T-minus one hour, 38 minutes and counting. This is shuttle launch control. Let me go back to uh, a little bit of uh, 
Houston, standing by for the board advisories. Uh, Ask, are you on the net? Uh, 
I'd like to be sure that uh, there is no question in your mind that you can re-engage that connector. Uh, we have ECL on here, and we have the OP if you need any further information. Roger, uh, I'll recheck that in just a moment, please. Roger, can you repeat that again? Shuttle launch control at T minus one hour, 21 minutes, 30 seconds, and counting. Uh, we have just had an indication from the prime crew, astronaut uh, John Young, the commander, and pilot Bob Crippen, that they are satisfied with the fix on the breathing air uh, quick disconnect, which was found to be in the wrong position. There's a pin on the quick disconnect, which is an indicator of whether it is seated properly, but when that pin is in, the airflow is not going to the uh, helmet as it is supposed to do. At the present time, that has been properly seated, the pin is in the proper position, and they understand the problem and are ready to proceed. The closeout crew in the white room uh, has been given permission to go ahead with the closeout. Uh, astronaut Lauren Shriver, who has been inside and has been working the problem with the quick disconnect, uh, has indicated that he is ready to uh, come out and the, uh, the rest of the closeout crew are taking out the miscellaneous things which are not needed for the flight, which are inside. These include things like uh, covers for the visors, which are on the astronauts' helmets, and various other paraphernalia that uh, 
such as flashlights, extra batteries, screwdrivers, Allen head tools, and uh, things which are necessary uh, to have there at the time that the crew is being placed into the proper position. Uh, we have had a comm check with Houston by the crew, and all other aspects of the countdown appear to be going very well. The crew will get back in touch with Houston about the T-minus 30 uh, minute point in the countdown, do another uh, final voice check with them to ensure that that communication system is working properly. So we've come over one hurdle uh, as we go through the, uh, the countdown. The only problem so far has been with the breathing air. The closeout crew in the white room has just removed the little bridge that goes across the, the doorway, uh, which the astronauts uh, use to enter into the, the, uh, the cabin area and helps protect the, the seals and the doorway from any damage that might occur as people are crawling through there. Uh, as soon as everybody is out, they will remove the air hose, which is used for uh, blowing uh, fresh air into the cabin. They're in the process of removing uh, other things uh, from there. The, uh, the ramp, which uh, uh, they removed only a portion of the ramp going into the doorway at the, uh, the present time, are passing out some of the, uh, the beams that are used there. Uh, they have platforms in that area because the orbiter is in a vertical rather than a horizontal position. It's necessary to have a uh, some sort of way for the uh, people that have to work in the cabin and the astronauts uh, to walk on the back bulkhead of the flight crew compartment. Uh, during flight, it's a wall. During the time it's on the pad, it's a uh, uh, is sort of the floor as uh, the astronauts and the technicians see it. Uh, pieces of that walkway being brought out at the present time. The once the door is closed, then the seals will be checked, the cabin will be pressurized to ensure that the integrity of it is ready for the flight. Uh, at that time, the, the seals around the access arm will be uh, taken back from the orbiter and the, the door closed and the arm prepared for retraction uh, to the launch mode. Present time, everything going along smoothly in our countdown. We're at the T minus one hour, 17 minute, and 40 second point and counting. This is Shuttle Launch Control. JLTS OTC 
at the Edwards Air Force Base in California. This is a tremendous opportunity for the uh, flight engineers uh, at NASA uh, and elsewhere in the world to get uh, some readings of an aircraft type spacecraft uh, which will be doing things that have never before been done uh, and therefore have never been able to be measured in real time as they actually happen. The, the orbiter accelerates from sitting on the ground uh, up to more than 17,000 miles per hour in order to go into orbit. And then, of course, it comes back from that speed down through the atmosphere, uh, going through hypersonic uh, speed regimes and then down to a landing at about 200 miles per hour. This is the first time that a winged vehicle has been sent through this entire spectrum of flight. At the present time, everything going very smoothly here in the countdown as we move toward the next hold, which comes at the T-minus 20-minute point in the count. It will be a 20-minute build-in hold. We'll have one other build-in hold after that, which comes at the T-minus 9-minute point and is at a 10-minute build-in hold. During this 20-minute uh, build-in hold, we will have a slight adjustment to our countdown clock uh, in order to bring us out with a T-0 exactly at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time this evening. Everything going along very smoothly, T-minus 55 minutes, 20 seconds, and counting. This is Shuttle Launch Control. T-minus 52 minutes, 30 seconds, and counting. Launch Director George Page just talking to weather. He's been looking out the window and says it sure looks nice out there. And he has had a affirmation from the weatherman that we're going to have good weather for a launch at 7 a.m. this morning. Uh, elsewhere in the countdown, we're coming up on the T-minus 51 minute point. This is the point at which we will begin the inertial measurement unit pre-alignment. Uh, for flight or pre-flight alignment. Uh, the inertial measurement units are an important part of the guidance system uh, which is used for telling the orbiter and the ground where it is uh, at all times during the flight. We had uh, only one problem in the countdown so far uh, this morning as we look toward our launch. That was after the crew had gotten into the cabin. Uh, when we tried to hook up the air hoses to their helmets, it was discovered that they were not getting air properly at their helmets. It turned out that the problem was in what is called a quick disconnect. It's a connection that's located underneath the seat, uh, which is used for connecting the hose that moves to the helmet. The quick disconnect was not quite in the proper position, and a locking pin was not in place. They found that. They moved it to the proper uh, 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 seating uh, uh, place in the uh, the quick disconnect. The, the pin popped out to the right position, and the air began to flow to both the pilot, Bob Crippen, and Commander John Young. Uh, as it is, everything going along very smoothly now. We don't know of any major problems uh, and are proceeding towards a liftoff at 7 a.m. this morning. We have passed the point now where we're beginning the IMU pre-flight alignment. This is a 51-minute task and uh, is started at the 51-minute point in the countdown and then completed during the built-in 20-minute hold that comes at the 20-minute point in the countdown. So everything going very smoothly at this point. The countdown stands at T-minus 50 minutes, 11 seconds, and counting. This is shuttle launch control. NTSA 
ATS, you back on air to ground two. Air to ground one. The MPS on two twelve. MPS. Okay, you're back, right? I'm back. Okay. Are you ready to pick up a mainline activation? Yeah, uh, we have prefer to do it for the clock. Okay. Shuttle launch control at T minus 43 minutes, 20 seconds, and counting. At the present time, the cabin leak check is in work and apparently proceeding along satisfactorily. That is not completed until approximately the T minus 30 minute point in the countdown. The closeout crew is finishing up the, the work which they need to do at the level uh, of the hatch that gives access to the astronauts, and then the they will prepare the swing arm to be moved back at the T-minus seven minute point in the countdown. The only other arm which has to be moved prior to liftoff is what's called the Gox vent arm for meeting cap. Uh, this is used for uh, gaseous nitrogen, uh, which is uh, sprayed on the, uh, the very top of the external tank to try and prevent any buildup of ice at that point where the liquid hydrogen vents uh, liquid oxygen vents from the external tank. Both of those tanks have been at their flight mass uh, for some time now and in the replenish mode where we add just enough to the tanks to keep them at the proper level as some of them uh, of the liquids uh, boil away. Uh, it's just natural that they should boil away because of the very, very cold temperatures of them. Liquid Hydrogen, for instance, boils at minus 423 degrees below zero Fahrenheit. At the present time, the closeout crew up in the, uh, the orbiter access arm uh, is making sure that the thermal protection system uh, is in the proper configuration there. They have to actually screw some plugs into it, uh, which are threaded uh, into the, the TPS, which is on that hatchway uh, and was put on here in the orbiter processing facility uh, just several months ago. At the present time, everything moving along very smoothly in our countdown. The uh, booster test conductor has uh, asked to calibrate the solid rocket motor pressure transducers. These are the instruments which are necessary to provide the information which separates the solid boosters during the flight. Uh, once they have burned out. So it's essential that those pressure transducers be working properly to prevent any premature separation. 
the pre-flight alignment of the inertial measurement unit is underway, and that will be completed at the end of the 20-minute build-in hold, which comes up at the T-minus 20-minute point. The range safety officer has reported that the Eastern Test Range Command test is complete, and Bob Crippen is about to begin the auxiliary power unit water boiler pre-activation. At the present time, everything going along very smoothly in our countdown. The count presently stands at T-minus 40 minutes, 23 seconds and counting. This is shuttle launch control. Let me know when you completed 472. Copy. GRPS 472 complete. Thank you. GLS OTC. Have you got uh, step uh, 494 complete? I was just calling to verify that. Okay. Uh, please see what's going to start, and I'll verify 493 also. Roger, 493 also. Okay. 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 They're going to give you an ADI clip on you. Okay, we appreciate that. Looks like I see our SDA out there doing our weather check. I think so. There you go, isn't it? That's uh, probably about to leave him in uh, 10 minutes all up this morning. OTC CL212. Go ahead. We'll give you completion of step 14, uh, 419, the cabin uh, pressure leak test. Very good. Good leak test. That's a farm of your Are you ready to do that? CL? Uh, yes, we are. We can give you step. Uh, 14497 and stand by to do the event uh, at 30 minutes. It's uh, so you can pick it up. Uh, Are you picking it up now? Yeah, we are. We'll also give you a verification of uh, step uh, 20. Uh, 520. Okay, good. I'll start the cabin then now.